Good morning. I'm Dale Holness, Broad County's mayor. And joining me this morning is mayors from several of our cities. We have Mayor Greg Ross from Cooper City, Mayor, Mayor Lori Llewellyn from Dania Beach, Mayor Josh Levy from Hollywood, Mayor Wayne Messam from Miramar, Mayor Matthew Sparks from Oakland Park, Mayor Christine Anchowski from Parkland, Mayor Sharon Mohammed from Pembroke Park, Mayor Frank Ortiz from Pembroke Pines, and also joining us this morning is uh, Commissioner Tracy Kalari, President of the League of Cities, and my colleague, uh, Commissioner Fisher. We get together this morning to discuss the alarming rise that we see in a number of new cases of COVID-19 here in Broward County. We were successful in reducing the spread through the shutdown, so we know shutdown works. But people also took the precautions that were necessary to get us to where we were down to as little as 16 cases in one day, testing positive. We saw days of 30, 39, 40, 50. And that was because of the emergency orders that we issued to shut down and for folks to stay home. That certainly is not sustainable. So we went to where we opened up. And as a result of that, and what appears to be that folks are not following the CDC guidelines or orders, we see spike as high as 506 new cases in one day. That is not sustainable either. It means that at some point in time, if this continues, we'll overrun our hospital medical care system. And then we won't be able to get people the proper treatment when they're ill, whether from COVID or other issues. So we know that social distancing and wearing a face covering a mask works. And I want to say to everyone, we must do everything we can to protect ourselves and each other so that we can stay healthy and somehow maintain the economy. If we don't, we'll have serious issues. So let me let you know that as of just a few moments ago, County Administrator Bertha N. Henry issued an emergency order, 2018. And Order 28 in calls for us to be able to shut down businesses that are not conforming and give them 24 hours to come into compliance. And there's a $500 fine. And if they decide that they don't want to do that and they're repeat violators, we also have in that order a $15,000 fine. Now, we are all in this together, all of us. Hence, you see a large representation of the mayors from many of our cities. We had a call earlier this week on Monday uh, where the discussion was, what do we do? And the consensus was that we go to where we have stronger enforcement. And they are here in solidarity to ensure that we're going in that direction, to where we're issuing stronger enforcement orders and as you see we're here at the sheriff's office because we want to let folks know in the community that we expect them to comply we expect that when you go out to get service from any entity and if someone is serving you somewhere that they have face covering on mask uh, that you're still socially distancing that our restaurants are not bars and bars are not open you can't gather there uh, without complying to the rules and regulations that we have set forth in Broward County. We have also established a hotline, 311. Again, the hotline is 311. If you find someone 
or some establishment that's not complying to the order, putting you and our community at risk, please call that number, 311. Code enforcement or law enforcement will respond. Uh, our cities are supporting us on this issue. So I'm gonna have Sheriff Ed, uh, Tony come forward and talk a little bit more about what law enforcement is doing out there and what we're seeing. Sheriff Tony. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, just want to give a globalized look in terms of what we are seeing from the law enforcement perspective throughout all our cities. Of course, the Broward Sheriff's Office is responsible for roughly half the county's uh, public safety services in terms of law enforcement. But we've been in communication, I've been in communication with our chiefs of police. And one of the things that is part of the problem in terms of what we are facing from a law enforcement standpoint is our cities. Um, the businesses that operate within all of our cities across the county has been somewhat inconsistent in complying with the CDC recommendations and things that have been put forth both at the state level and the county level when it comes to the compliances we expect for businesses to be open. And I'm sure that that is the nexus behind why we're having an increase. And so our goal, uh, has, has has been from the very beginning, is to educate the community about the importance behind uh, complying and then also moving progressively towards citations should it be needed. But with those practices, it just hasn't been enough. And so the county uh, has elected in, in to operate and put forth you know, further restrictions and being more punitive in the sense that businesses must comply. We can't afford to continue to have this type of spread continue here in the county. Uh, the mayor outlined what that kind of systemic approach will, will be and the burdens that it would introduce on our health care system. So what we are encouraging from the law enforcement perspective is don't get yourself in that position. Uh, this is something where we will enforce, we will support uh, the county as the code enforcement officers will come out and institute these uh, obligations and restrictions in terms of 24-hour suspension. Uh, it is not the law enforcement role or responsibility to shut down businesses, but the county has the authority. And should that take place for one of our businesses, we are obligated from the law enforcement perspective to ensure that you are in compliance if that applies to your businesses. This is not a time for us to take lightly um, the, the impact that this is having. We've seen the shift in dynamics in terms of how this virus is impacting different demographics now. Early on, as we fought this virus, it was the elderly population, but now we're seeing a significant change where younger populations are now being uh, more vulnerable or contracting this virus. And so I know it's been a time where everyone has been, uh, that cabin fever approach has impacted us all, including myself. But we have to do the things that we can to be socially responsible for each other. So this isn't just a matter of implementation of administrative orders uh, and putting forth new restrictions on businesses. This is about every single person in this county that reside or visit it being responsible enough to do the things that are put forth in the CDC recommendations so that we can get through this together. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you. And if I may call uh, Commissioner Kalari Hollywood, who is the president of the League of Cities, to come forward, please. Good afternoon. I'm Tracy Kaleri, Commissioner of City of Hollywood and the President Broward League of Cities. I am joined this morning by several of my municipal elected officials and we thank Mayor Holmes for his leadership and gathering us here this morning to work together through the challenges of COVID-19. All of us have suffered through the impacts of COVID-19, some more than others. Hearts and prayers to those who have, who have lost the fight to this horrible disease the virus, I should say. As a nurse, I see frontline impacts every day. The rise in the cases that are currently experiencing right now is very alarming. It is critically important that our businesses and our residents follow the reopening guidelines. Social distancing is so important. Hand washing is a major important factor. And wearing masks and following the protocol. We strongly, the City 31 City strongly support and are working together as partners with the county and we are so appreciative for this emergency order that has been placed. And I can only stress that I encourage everyone to do your part. We are all in this together. If you do not follow the protocols and you do not take action today to make sure that you're safe and that your friends are safe and that their family members are safe, we are never going to beat this virus. So please, everyone, do your part, let's work together, and make Broward County the best. Thank you.
So we want everyone to comply. We want to be able to get back to where we can get people back to work. But if we have to go backwards, we will have to. So I'm, I'm pleading with everyone, please, follow the rules, follow the guidelines, and we'll be better off for it. Now, we have a program that started in Broward County called Supporter of Broward. And Mr. Bob Swindell from the uh, Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance is here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring him up to tell you a little bit about the SOB program, the Supporter of Broward program. Mr. Swindell, would you come forward? Uh, this is a way for us to help uh, revive our economy and support our small local businesses. Uh, good afternoon, and, uh, and again, thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Mayor. This was unexpected. Uh, many of you saw recently we announced a supporter of Broward campaign. Um, we anticipated that uh, with the opening, that the transmissions of the transmission of virus would, would spike, and unfortunately, we've also seen that the ages are trending much lower. Um, and clearly, as folks that are going out, that feel invincible, that don't really want to uh, obey the guidelines or follow them. And the whole purpose of this campaign is to instill safety and get folks to participate, be supporters of Broward. It's not necessarily for yourself that you wear this face mask, it's for those around you. And science has proven that these face masks reduce the transmission of virus, especially if you're out at a social place for a drink or for dinner. Uh, we want folks to go out and patronize our businesses. And the last thing we need is a, is a return to restrictions on business where they can't open. We have so many businesses on the brink of bankruptcy. Patrons have got to follow these guidelines. I, I go out and I see the, the businesses are doing a good job. Um, the folks that work in the kitchen, the folks that are waiting on you are wearing masks and doing the right thing. It's the patrons that aren't doing the right thing. So we hope the supporter of Broward campaign will grab people's attention. It gives you a little bit of an inside joke if you're a resident of Broward. Um, we've given a whole new meaning to three little letters, SOB. We want everyone to be a proud SOB, and you can visit proudsob.com to learn more about the program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. At this point in time, we'll open for uh, any questions. Any of my colleagues want to speak? We've got two. Good afternoon, I'm Mayor Wayne Messam from the city of Miramar, and I'd like to thank the mayor, as well as our president of the Broward League of Cities um, for their leadership during this um, tremendous time. Um, on behalf of the city of Miramar, we understand the importance of compliance of the CDC guidelines, and we are in full support of these measures. The city of Miramar is the fourth largest city in Broward, and we are now, we have the fourth largest number of COVID 19 positive cases. So it's important upon our residents and the city of Miramar and our law enforcement and code enforcement to work in conjunction with our colleagues across the county because it's very important that as Broward County that we ensure that we have a level playing field in enforcement and expectation. So just think about your family, think about your neighbor. It's so important for us to wear these little simple fabrics, it can save a life. It's worth your life, and it's worth the life of every Broward resident. So I'd like to thank everyone for their compliance, and the city of Miramar is in full support of every measure to ensure that Broward County is the safest county, um, not only in the state of Florida and America. Uh, we'll have uh, Mayor Joy Cooper, and then we'll take questions. Uh, I'll be brief. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor. Sir, thank you, Bertha uh, Henry, a county administrator, and thank you, President Colberry, for your leadership. I just wanted to take a point of privilege to share with you that Hallandale Beach has passed a regulation and I wanted to make this make sure this got out in the press. We are now requiring everyone that is in a condominium apartment complex and multifamily area to wear masks indoors in every common space. We believe as a, a community of many condominiums that we do. Condominiums are small communities. Please, if you live in a condominium in Hallandale Beach, please wear your mask. Take care of your fellow um, neighbors, and we'll all get through this together. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, we are open for questions. Mayor Hummer, can you talk about if, if someone calls 311, kind of walk us through what's going to happen from that point on? Uh, 
Okay, so far uh, for our 311 number, we've gotten, as of this morning, 831 complaints. And what we do when we get these complaints is they're referred to the proper jurisdiction, whatever city they're in, or the law, whatever law enforcement agency or code division that needs to then go out and investigate the issue uh, and get it resolved. At this point in time, if we find someone that's not in compliance, uh, we can shut them down if a business is there. And if they continue to not be in compliance, uh, they could be, face a $15,000 fine. So there's a process that we work with the uh, cities, the municipalities, to refer uh, to them these issues. Both uh, are, are engaged, both law enforcement and code enforcement, depending on the city and their process. I'm sorry, are we relying on? We're relying on the entire public to make these calls, anyone at all uh, to call into, because it's, it's all about us, all of us are in this together. So whoever you are, if you see something that's gonna affect your health, uh, and the community's health and the, and the econ economy of our community, because if we shut down, that's every one of us is going to hurt again also. So it's all of us, it's incumbent on all of us to participate. Yes? So we're still at 50% in restaurants in, in terms of capacity. Uh, and, and we mean restaurant when we say restaurant, not a bar or a club pretending to be a restaurant. And we're finding some of that, and those will be shut down. Uh, in terms of wearing masks, whenever you're interfacing, yet receiving service, or being served uh, by someone in the public, we need for you to wear your mask. We also recommend that you wear it in general if you're out interfacing with others. Uh, you're walking along the street, we don't require it right now, but if we have to get to that place, I think we will. Uh, you see what Hallandale has done already uh, in, in stepping up. And the cities also have the ability to be more stringent than we are in terms of the policies that they set uh, for, for uh, controlling the spread of this virus. There, there is cer certainly conversation that we're having now uh, amongst the mayors of Broad County and, and our county administration uh, administrator uh, to look at that to see how, if we need to go further than we are right now. But masks have always been required when you're out being served or in public getting service uh, since the 11th of April. Mr. Mayor, what are the main violations that people are doing in general terms? So what we find is the main violation is many uh, restaurants are not adhering to the capacity of 50%. And further that some uh, clubs and bars are operating, pretending that they're restaurants. And people are not wearing uh, their facial covering while they're in these establishments. Uh, so the, that gathering of people close together, talking and, and oftentimes at, at high pitch, cause the spread of the virus. Eight hundred and ninety one complaints. We've had it open up for about ten days. We've had it open for about ten days now. How many? So we on the call on Tuesday we had uh, Dr. Tashi, we had the CEO of Broad Health. Uh, we have representation from Memorial, from Cleveland, uh, from, certain, uh, from several of our hospitals. At this point in time, they're not seeing a real issue with ICU. And there's not, there's capacity in the hospital now. What they're finding, what we find from the demographics, that it's mostly younger people at this point in time. Yet they're seeing some increase in hospitalization. And I understand that there's a lag between the positive cases increasing and then increased usage of hospitals, ICU beds, and, and, um, and hospital in general. Because that virus, uh, once it, it gets in your system, it takes a little bit for you to get to where you really have to go to a hospital. So 
I anticipate that we'll see an increase, and they are seeing increases also. It's not as dramatic yet, but expect that if this continues, we will see more of that. Thank you very much. Let's all stay safe, protect each other, wear facial coverings, follow the rules, follow the CDC guidelines.